All right, guys. Uh, I'm just going to see where I am on YouTube. Um, just so I can see your comments because it doesn't seem to be showing the software. Um, but I'm about a week away before heading back to Spain, which is a good thing. I've got to admit, it's been a bit more painful than I would have liked. A lot more messing around this year. Uh, thanks to good old COVID, and then obviously we've got Brexit looming as well, which is um, let's just, let's let's just be honest. My personal opinion is it's a no deal Brexit, which is exactly what Boris was expected in the first place. So I don't think it's a case of oh shock horror surprise. I don't think they've worked hard enough on actually uh, doing anything but a no deal Brexit. Um, so it's a little bit disappointing, but like I said, it's to be expected. So I should be able to. Come on. So, Saturday. <laughs> I was just going to say, I'm going out for a walk after the video, and I've just looked out the window and it started raining. Um, <laughs> something <laughs> something I don't normally get blighted with in Spain, thankfully. Um, but obviously, here, here it's um, quite a common theme over the winter period. So I'm just about to, there we go, nearly there, nearly into the conversation piece where I can actually see what people are saying. Videos. Ready for Spain. Oh, look, we are actually appearing. Now I can see the th feed. We're there. There we go. Just need to turn the audio off. Morning, up. There we go. Chabelle. Chabelle to see it. So I apologies for this. It's the first time I've used this software. Uh, well, sorry, I used it on my other channel yesterday, but it seems to go much, much easier than it is today. Because it's not actually telling me where. <laughs> it's not telling me where the conversation is. Uh, Millie's journey. Hi, watching here from Australia. Hi, nice to see you. Uh, it's actually appeared on my screen, so okay. Didn't do that yesterday. I had to go and find it on YouTube, so this might be an easier way of doing it. Um, good to see you. I uh, clicked a few comments. There we go. Uh, at the podcast. Okay, so um, yes, I'm preparing the getting the old COVID test was a bit of a interesting one um, because I had to go. I've had to go to Leicester, which is miles away. Um, I couldn't get anything from uh, anywhere nearby. It was like literally all the the boots are, are fully booked. Um, you, you literally just couldn't get anything in the area. So it's gone from, I think it was 120 quid to 185 quid to get it done at a private clinic up in Leicester. And then they've now brought forward this other test, which is faster and cheaper. But in all honesty, I couldn't actually find where you could get the cheaper test. Um, I think it's called a TMA or something. Um, so I'm just like, just want to get home for Christmas. Once I'm on that flight, I know I'm going home. And that's that's the main thing I'm looking for. Um, the rest of it, I'll just take it as it comes. Um, yeah, it's been a difficult year. I know a lot of people out there have had it pretty hard. Um, myself been quite lucky in the sense of work's continued, but believe me, it's not been an easy year um, because we've had to adapt everything around the COVID situation, the ability to travel to and from works, um, materials, because we've had problems around suppliers, because a lot of the manufacturing's been reduced over the year. Um, we've got some contracts where they've had to move months uh, for the, the work they were doing simply because there's no materials. They didn't order them from Asia, which obviously adds, I think it's about a two month wait list. If you don't, you know, a lot of them are just in time. So if they cancel an order, it's instantly lost at least two months because the shipment hasn't been ordered. And it's normally, you know, when you order now, it's going to be a minimum of two months. So the point being is they didn't order them, so that was the two months, but then they've got to build up stock, so that could be three months. Um, so it could be another month before they place the order, which then you're talking three, four months to get deliveries. It has a massive knock-on effect, and logistically-wise, just creates absolute nightmares. Um, trying to keep the budgets balanced on various projects and stuff has just been a little bit more painful than I would have liked. But we got there, um, so that's it. I'm just 
just preparing to uh, head home for Christmas. Um, Amazon seems to be running a lot smoother this year, though. <laughs> they seem to be doing a phenomenal amount of trade. Um, I think their shares must be up by about 20% easily. Um, although, for, I believe the GDP is now on a slight recovery as well, so the economy may actually have a quicker recovery than we're being told, because everything seems doom and gloom constantly. I'm trying to stay away from that stuff. I do think there's opportunities out there. I do think... Um, once things quieten down, the recovery may be a lot sharper than people think. Um, it's a bit like when people ask me about moving to Spain. Well, because of the way things have gone, it's, you're more likely to have a uh, opportunity come up where a business has gone. Because the customers are going to return, but the business failed because of the COVID, they got locked down, all this sort of stuff. The business has gone. But I'll tell you now, the amount of people I know that are crying out for a holiday, crying out to go back back to their uh, holiday homes, etc. It's 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 phenomenal. A lot of people want to travel. A lot of people want to get back to where they normally go. They want their their uh, two weeks in the sun or six months in the sun, whatever it is. Um, and they've been prevented from doing it this year. So I think this is where Amazon's done quite well. I know I've spent a lot more on Amazon this year. That I normally do and it's simply because I haven't traveled as much so I haven't spent it on restaurants I haven't spent it on flights I haven't spent it on air to air what do you call it air, airport parking or anything like that or trains um, so it's gone on Amazon and stuff um, one of the things I will recommend is getting an oculus VR set if you haven't seen these around um, they're really really good um, they're basically just a headset where you go into like a virtual um, environment it's got all sorts of games, whatever. There's so many things you can do with it, and I do think it's just on that infancy where it's just becoming mainstream. Um, Oculus, by the way, is owned by Facebook. So that's another thing. They'll be pushing it quite heavily as one of their products because they can see the opportunities in there. Um, if you do suffer with nausea, um, keep away from space games and things like that. You'll be all over the place. <laughs> <laughs> You'll be like falling over in your sitting room thinking you're floating around in a spaceship because you're all disorientated because inside the headset and your your earphone, you know, it's it's telling you you're somewhere else. So you will fall over um, <laughs> if you suffer with nausea. Uh, ah, yeah, uh, Richard McDonnell. Um, yeah, how do I get on with the PCR test? It's booked for um, next week because obviously I've got to do it three days before the, the flight. Um, so it's booked. I've got to drive miles all the way up to Leicester. It's cost me £185 because everywhere's fully booked. Um, the boots was, I think the earliest appointments was the 4th of January. Um, I tried Petersburg, tried near London, tried Birmingham, tried Coventry. Um, no chance. So I've had to go private. Um, the fr frustrating thing is they've got this new test that they're now accepting, which allegedly is cheaper, but I haven't found anywhere that does them. Um, and I know s some people have mentioned that some of the airports are doing them, but I haven't seen anything out of Birmingham Airport saying that they do the tests on site. Because if they do, that would have just saved all this hassle. But then again, um, I'd probably have to go the day before or whatever to get it for the flight the following day just because of delays on the, the information. Um, so I'd have to say with that side, I probably couldn't get it in time. Uh, simple as that. But this other test, um, I can't remember what they call it. I, th I assume it's like with a needle or something instead of the shoving stuff up your nose and in your, in your mouth. Um, that test, I think it's 40 minutes or something. It, it's, you correct me on that because like I said it's only just something I've picked up that Spain's now accepting it uh, yeah Richard McDonald solid old Dickens health we'll have them Monday 115 quid yeah that's good yeah I was, I was really struggling in this area so I just just took what I could because um, obviously the last thing I want to do is uh, <laughs> miss my flight but yeah I spent a good couple of hours trying to find something I've got to admit Boots really need to look at their website. Um, if they're doing the test, there's no point going on there. Oh, what's your postcode? Yeah, there's none in your area. Uh, okay, give me another area. You should actually be going, what's your dates? Your nearest one's Edinburgh. 
that's that's what they should have done. <laughs> that's the easy way of doing it because they're already fully booked. There's no point going pick where you are in the country. No, there's none available. Okay, anywhere else? No, none available there. No, none away. It was back to front. Uh, yeah, the new lateral flow flow test. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. The the Spain's now accepting it. And I believe the testing on that from the stuff I've seen from my, what my wife's got in Spain, it's only about 40 euros for that test. So that one's quicker, cheaper, um, but I couldn't find anybody that does it. Probably get to the airport. And if I do, if I see them at Birmingham airport, I will say, this is where to get the test done. And I will ask, how quickly can you do it? How do you book it? Is it just turn up and they sort it out? Um, if I get that information, I'll, I'll share it. Um, but yeah, it's it's one of those. It's all very last minute. I mean, I would expect the airport or the airline to be feeding regular information for updates on these things because they're so critical. Don't have a test, can't fly. Um, but it's all like, check our website. Um, it's just, well, you turned up, you haven't got the test. Why didn't you check our website? Because I'm the customer. Maybe I'm missing something here. Um, yeah, it's a very peculiar world. These a lot of companies are that way, where they're just like, "Well, you've ordered it. We've already got your money. Um, it's your problem, not ours. We don't have to keep you updated. You have to just assume that everything's okay, or keep checking in with us." Um, customer service is falling by the wayside in many places. <laughs> but anyway, just focus on Christmas. I've got a week to go. Got a lot of stuff to do for work, which I need to get wrapped up um, between now and Wednesday, um, which is probably where I'll, I'll spend tomorrow uh, doing a piece on sustainability. Uh, it's a fairly large document, probably going to end up about 30 pages. Um, but once that's in, I've just got to tally me accounts up, and that'll hopefully tally me accounts up on Monday, and that's it. You know, shouldn't be anything that disrupts. Um, the rest of the week so i do have time for my test do have time to fill in the, the form on the uh, spanish site as well because you've got to get the spanish app was it sph let me check i know it begins with s i've got it on here from last the last time Let's see spanish what's this it's called the spanish health something sp sph uh uh dark support Watching your video made me decide to come down 2nd January till the 1st of May. Just booked a test for New Year. You, uh, Unizy, you, dry mouth, I need some water. Um, New Year's Eve, me and my mum, 500 quid. Had tickets with Norwegian. They stopped flying and don't give refunds. Yeah, it's, I mean, to be fair, I'm already geared up to drive if I have to. I'm going home. <laughs> that's, that's it. Um, I'm driving home, whatever. The, the, the priority is getting home. So that's the focus. So I do think if you can get out there, just do it. Um, I think Torre Vieja is one of the lowest places in Spain for COVID anyway. Now, personally, I'm not um, concerned about COVID for myself. I'm fairly young. My family are fairly young. And, and it's not us being selfish. It's the fact is... Um, we can't lock everybody away um, to avoid other people having the risk. It's normally back to front. You know, if I've got measles, I don't tell everybody to go home. I stay at home. That's that's, that's how this stuff normally works, but it's very peculiar this year. Um, I was just going to say, that this is from Dart Support, was, was just going to say thanks for your videos and I hope we actually get there now. Yeah, go for it. I'm hoping you get there. But let us know if you get there. That's that's an important bit. Let us know you can make it. So I do think it's important to show that there is some normality here because we're all getting so to stay at home, don't do nothing, just sit there, order takeout, gain twenty pounds, all that sort of stuff. But nobody's actually going. We're trying to get a bit of normality here. We're trying to work with the system. We know the system's not great, um, but we're trying to find our ways to get back home, go to places that are important to us. Um, because I do think this year, well-being of people has suffered considerably. Um, and some people, the holiday is only, you know, I'm, I know myself, that's Spain is where I live. 
But I know some people, the holiday is the thing that gets them through the year. They could be doing a very mundane, you know, leave of work, you know, just pulling a press or whatever. Um, Christmas, uh, Christmas, New Year, holidays, the very specific things that get them through the year because that's what they focus on. They've just come back in January, had a great Christmas, focusing on the holiday for July, all that sort of stuff. It's a routine. And when that gets broken, people, you know, start wondering what's life all about. And that, that's pretty sad, but it, it is the reality out there for a lot of people. They need some positive focus, and a lot of that's been removed this year, which is, it, it's, it's sad, it's disappointing. Um, the impact's been severe to a lot of people. Um, Richard McDonnell, uh, reading BBC and Guardian News, saying no holidays after January 1st. There you go, some positive news as usual out of the uh, the usual uh, suspects. Um, I don't, I don't see how that's even enforceable, and I do think. I do you remember going into this whole lockdown fiasco at the beginning, um, when they they were being criticised for being late into a lockdown. There were certain things that they brought up. Firstly, you can't put people into a lockdown more than once because people stop listening. The second one is you can't keep people in a lockdown for too long. They stop listening. Uh, in fact, it's I think it's a bit more severe than that. It could end, end up with rioting. Let's be honest, there's a lot of news coverage that we're not seeing in the sense of mainstream news, but there is a lot of things going on around Europe, the US, globally, that we're not seeing where people are actually protesting about the way things are being locked down. So, yeah. Well, the other thing on the the holiday scenario though is probably to do with the Brexit so it's probably not just the Covid situation it's the whole fact that I suspect Boris is going to uh, have a no deal Brexit and a no idea where we're going Brexit um, don't get me wrong Spain and many other countries are going to be open for trade but what that looks like has got to be agreed and that, that's the hard bit uh, I think Spain, Italy and Greece, Portugal will independently allow travel over on the EU regs. Yeah, exactly. I do. I think because they're there for business. That's what I'm saying. They're very positive and want to do business. The peacock feathers and stuff often comes from certain parties in the EU. And also the UK does exactly the same, which is why you end up with gridlock. You know, um, sorry, roadblocks where people just hit there. doesn't go past it. They don't sit and reconciliate. They don't sit and say, right, we need to sort this out. It just becomes, I want this, you want that, and we're not budging. And that's where we've been stuck for a long time. Annette uh, Olofsson, apologies if I get that wrong. Uh, hello from Sweden. Gothenburg are going are going on the 26th of December with a spoon Ryanair one weekend to Torreja. Pure new apartments. What can you set, uh, see by car? Um, are you on about around the area um there's a lot in the area to be fair if, you, if you're looking for things to see i mean um i'm not sure what will be open because obviously i've got to go back myself and see what's open um so i don't know if, for, for example orihuela carts i don't know if the go-karts open I don't know if the horse trekking's open or the um some of the other centers because like elchi's got an outdoor center with a high rope for walking and all that sort of crap around its park um i'm not sure if that's open um but i assume things like the nature parks will be open and uh probably elchi uh safari park and zoo that that's probably going to be open um but it's worth just searching through on the internet because obviously every day things keep changing open close open close and it's like the uk tier three um well like Scotland, I think they're opening the bars now, but it's tier three, where they were closed under the lockdown. It just goes backwards and forwards, backwards and forwards. Um, it just keeps changing. Ah, yeah, uh, Richard, yeah, it's tied to Brexit. Yeah, it will be, because there's no paperwork agreed. So do you form in, fill in Form 12 or, or 2B? None of that's been agreed. <laughs> so that's this is where the, the spanning is to be uh, thrown into the works if that's what they're going to do so we can actually sort out what's going on 
Hence, I'm going home before it happens. Uh, Annette Olsen, sorry for the computer spelling mistakes. Yeah, no, that's no problem. Um, what to see on the 26th of December? I'm not actually sure. I'll, I'll update once I get home. Um, the reason I say that is because, like the matter, it doesn't have a Christmas tree. It's the first year I've I've known that there is no Christmas tree on the matter. Um, now, there will be events going on, but I need to find out where they are. Um, and one of the things I will say is there's probably going to be stuff on at Lazinia. Um, well, what that looks like at the moment, I've no idea till I get back. We need to understand, are they limiting who goes where or what? Um, but I'll be able to tell you, starting probably from next weekend, once I've actually been out and about myself to actually see where uh, things are, you know, because I've got to go out there and do a bit of research. Because on the internet, um, you, it's fairly limited on the information. I've literally got to walk around. And the good thing is the car's sorted, so I can actually drive around this time. Um, dark support, hey, I'm from Gothenburg too. Hey, good to see you. I've got some uh, followers from up in the up in the north of Europe. Uh, 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 Churchill Open, do you think? I don't know what that is. Um, I don't know if you're... I don't know this is misspelling. Is it a Churchill bar? Maybe. I don't know where the bar is, so I, I can't I can't comment. Um in fact Yeah. I mean if it's a bar or a restaurant, it may be open because when I was out at La Mata nearly everything was still open when I was last over. And that wouldn't have changed. So there's a good chance if it is a bar or restaurant it, it will be open. It's just that they just drop the staff levels right down, just to at, uh, a skeleton staff level, just to keep keep things ticking over. Save going bankrupt. Um, but yeah, it's very likely it will be open. Um, dark sport. I saw it was twenty four in Tolibaka yesterday. How was the weather in January? To be fair, it's it seems to be getting warmer. Um, probably part of this climate change stuff. Um, but yeah, it's normally somewhere for me. I, I find it somewhere between fourteen and maybe twenty-six, yeah, depending on what day it is. But one thing I will say: if you sit in the sun, so if, for example, go out to a restaurant somewhere, and even if it's windy, just find a spot that's out the wind and under the sun. It's warm. <laughs> it's all it's warm. Um, that's why the next apartment we're looking at buying. Um, it's got to have a roof deck because basically when I work like I work all the time so when I'm not working I want to go sit in my roof deck and just relax read a book chill out um, so it's an important aspect of the next property we're purchasing because we need that good weather that's what we're there for don't matter what time of year I want it all the time um, our church is a church to open um, I would expect so, because um, I have seen some of the, even during the lockdown period, there was some um, religious ceremony still going on. They were still walking in the street with their um, marches and stuff, so I don't see them stopping that. But will they have the big event that they have in Tolareca normally? I don't know. I, I, it's really hard to tell at the minute. I'll have to wait until I'm there because the information that's written may not be accurate because, th like I said, things change on a weekly basis. So they may have given up trying to keep it up to date or they've put cancelled and it's not cancelled. Um, so I just need to research it on once I get home. I can find out from people in the area. Uh, yeah, yeah, definitely got churches with priests in, in Tolibeka. Um, there's multiple churches around, um, but I'll have to double check if they're open. I would expect them to be open um, because there's been a bit more structured than it has been in the UK. Um, I found people adhere to the rules a lot more in Spain. So I know in La Mata, all the restaurants now were open and still wouldn't have closed as far as I'm aware. Um, but it was literally people were sitting in twos, keeping a distance. It was it was all very well organised. So I would assume the church is the same. It's two two people separate. Because I even went to the cinema with my kids. 
um, during the lockdown. Um, well, lockdown, day to day. I, I mean, I've got to still call it a lockdown because it's not back to normal. But basically, I took my took my kid, my son, and his friends um, for his birthday, and they just sat in twos. Um, so yeah, a lot of stuff is still functional. Um, then you just go, you've got to sit as twos, or you've got to be two meters apart and sit on your own, whatever the rules are. Um, but I do find Spain's a bit more proactive in trying to get things back to normal uh, rather than just shutting everything down, which obviously doesn't help anybody. Uh, doo -doo -doo. Next question. Yeah, that's the thing I've seen around Annette around Christmas trees. I've seen on YouTube, funny enough, there's a Christmas tree in um, La Zinia Boulevard. I've definitely seen one there. Um, but I have to go around and search, see who hasn't done it this year. Because the funny thing is, I would say La Mata's had more money this year because there's a lot more Spanish there than, than normal. Because because Madrid and Valencia and other areas have had lockdowns, they've all gone to the coast. There's been loads of people that normally aren't there. They do like two weeks a year, four weeks a year. They've been there for months. So there's been a lot more local buying um, than foreigners coming. Although uh, the restaurants and bars that I know said there's a lot more Brits been going to La Mata this year. So I assume that's people that normally go to say Thailand or whatever have been coming more localized and actually coming into Spain. So it does seem that the, although it's not been bustling, it's just been constant throughout the year, um, which is why a lot of businesses have sort of maintained the ability to stay open. Don't get me wrong, I'm not saying they've had, have had a boosted, boosted year or something because the, I believe there's a national, I think it's called Bar National, which is near, well, it's actually the next street from mine. Um, they're doing like uh, food parcels and stuff because I think there's uh, about 120 people in La Mata that have lost their jobs, suffering with no electricity, no food, that sort of stuff. But ha can't confirm that. This is one of the things I haven't really spoken about it because I need to go and check it first because over the years with time in Asia and other places, I'm very wary of charitable stuff because I've seen so many bad things over the years where the money's just gone so um, until I get there, won't talk about it too much because um, I need to verify it. Uh, Richard McDonald, feeling so sorry for the businesses around us in Grand Alicante, Santa Polo. I don't think many bars will survive this spring. It's difficult most of the time, really is, because they struggle. Um, since the boom went, you know, the, ha well, the housing crisis, it, things haven't really recovered because one of the problems you've got is they keep building more houses. So instead of redeveloping or focusing on getting the areas that are already existing going they keep building more estates which means if you've got a bar here the new business is getting further and further away from you all the time um i mean it's one of the reasons i do focus a lot on the matter because it's quite a nice place to live yes it's not the greatest place in the sense of latest buildings and you know it's not a tech tech place or anything it's somewhere to go and chill um but i think that's why well it's why i like it you know it's a safe environment people are friendly um virtually no crime um got the beach the nature park all that sort of stuff and um, it's good for kids good for people that are retired good for all ages you know it's it's not a party town um so it's very laid back in just somewhere to go and chill out um but yeah, a lot of the bars will be having an absolute nightmare this year. Um, it's it's not good, but, but also the, there's very little support for them as well. Um, but the UK is the same. The biggest repossessions in the pub trade is after Christmas. Um, because what happens is people take January off because um, they've had a hard year spend their money for the for takings etc deserve a break a holiday and then in uh, february the repossessions start because they couldn't afford to pay the bills um yeah <laughs> bars never a good business trade it's always a hard one um dark support we rented a flat on airbnb 
uh, room next to the marina for 500 euros a month. We've got a nice roof terrace, so hopefully it will be some some sun. It, you'll, yeah, you'll get some sun on there. Like I said, as long as you get out the wind and you're in the sunlight, it'll be nice. You'll you'll still catch a good sun sun on there. It's perfect. Um, I mean, I remember when we first went to uh, La Mata when we first moved to Spain. My kids were actually in the sea, and that was I think that was October or November, and they actually went swimming in the sea. So, so I don't know. If that doesn't say it all, I don't I don't know what does. Uh, and then, when am I going to Todoreca? Um, next week. I'm flying next week. All going well. <laughs> Got got a few hoops to jump through between now and then. I've got to download the the tourism app, um, the health app uh, for for Spain. Got to get my test done, and that's going to come back with a negative result. Um, book my train, and I hope there's no problems with trains. Get myself through Birmingham Airport, and then I can relax. I can go home as soon as I'm on that plane. Headset on, eyes are going to sleep. And just wait until I get into Spain, and it's just once I hit that tarmac, I'm home. That's it. That's what I'm waiting for. That moment where you just, I'm here. <laughs> it's, been, it's been hard work to get to this point. Um, uh, can my son, he's 12 years old, in March find bodies in Toreca? You think? Yeah. Um, the the main thing is actually, I mean, is he looking to move there, or is he just looking to just visit? Because there is a lot of local kids. It's like my son. My my son goes to school in Spain. In Spain, so he has a lot of friends. The I mean, um, and they're all really nice kids as well. In the sense of, I mean, don't get me wrong, some of them are wild, but they're, they're nice kids in the sense of they're not disruptive um, in a bad way. You know, they you know they're quite boisterous, but they're all good. You know, well mannered, they behaved in the sense of you say don't do that, they don't do it. Um, but yeah, there's a lot of kids around. The is in the area. You find a lot of the kids. Um, the parents are in the bigger cities for work. But I suppose this year there may be a lot of parents actually in Torreca because if there's no work in say uh, Valencia, Barcelona, and Madrid, um, the parents may actually be at home this year because normally they stay with the grandparents a lot. Um, so you may, yeah, I don't think you'll have a problem finding, finding kids, um, shouldn't be difficult at all. Uh, Dark Support, I had never heard of Toriaka before I started seeing your videos last year, now I'm coming down well excited. Yeah, it's, it's, I like it, you know, it's, it's not for everybody, don't get me wrong, I, I mean, the way I always put life is... One person's utopia is another person's nightmare. For me, Toreca has a lot of things to offer. Um, if you're there as a tourist, it's got a lot of things. You know, you got the jet jet boat ride, you got the water skiing, the jet skiing. Um, go over to, to go and see the dolphins if you're lucky enough on the old ferry to Barker Island, where it's got the natural sea life. Um, and this lovely little. Um, it's got it's got a uh, what do you call it a fort on there, but as well there's lots of little cottages and stuff. So if you ever fancy being on a remote island for a few weeks, that's the, there's a place there where you can rent the cottages. Um, but it has a sea life sanctuary there, so there's a lot of sea life if you like scuba diving or snorkeling. Um, there's deep sea fishing. There's all sorts. At the same time, if you just want to go and chill out, it's fine. There's loads of restaurants. Um, there's you can go trekking, you can go quad biking, you can just go for walks and across the nature park, whatever it is. That's why I like it. It's got so many things. And if you live there, you imagine it's like um, you're living amongst a environment that is built for tourism, which means you've got so many facilities that wouldn't be in a normal town because, quite simply, they're, they're for tourists. So you've always got these opportunities. Don't get me wrong. You still pay tourist rates because of that. That's one of the problems with living in those types of areas. But at the same time, the ability you go, I want to go pony trekking. I want to go quad biking. I want to do this. But if they know you, you, you better negotiate different rates anyway because you're one of the locals. Because <laughs> that's, that's how this works. Um, I'll just scroll up my questions for a minute. 
Uh, yeah, Annette, we're going on the 26th of December for one week. I'm sure you'll love it. I'm sure you will. Um, you recently bought an apartment in Tolareca for holidays. Yeah, it's, I mean, that's what I'm saying. I'm currently looking at buying myself. Um, I'm just about to move some more money. Um, so I've pretty much got my money ready now. And I know it's the apartment I wanted to buy. Um, was put down as sold and now it's back on the market. So I'm going to approach him um, again, um, probably in January and look to close that deal. Um, and then we'll have a few videos of the renovation projects because one of the things I'm thinking of doing is putting some solar water heating on the, the roof and then putting underfloor heating in the house so that during the winter etc it's got free heating from the sun um, that's just one of the thoughts I've got at the moment on that's what I'm saying I'm not rushing into it I want to do it once and do it right uh, yeah, for me, I'm looking at the dark support. I'm looking for good, good food, good food, few beers and palm trees. Then I'm happy. There ain't many palm trees unless you go up to Elche, um, but there is some palm trees along the front of Torrebeca. Um, you do get a chance uh, to go to Elche. I know they they did have. I think it was a bit of a fire there, it destroyed a lot of their trees. Um, but if you want to see palm trees, they've got plenty up there. Um, and then, like I said, they do have the Skywalk. So if you look for that park, you'll be able to walk around them fairly, well, it is fairly high level. Uh, you can go up there and have a look at that. Uh, I believe that's on the top of the palm trees. Uh, yeah, and then, then more and more you go to Torrebeca. Yeah, because the thing is, once you've got your place set up, it's a bit, it's a bit like me. I've got a suitcase going this year. Um, I don't normally take a suitcase at all because why would I? All my clothes and that are already in Spain. So I normally just have hand luggage because I take my laptops. Um, and if, if it wasn't the security on the work laptop, I wouldn't even take that because um, I would just, because I've got other computers in Spain. But reality is um, I don't take clothing, I don't take shoes, I don't take um, even a toothbrush because they're already there. You know, if you've got your own place, you set it up. Even if you rent it out, you take your stuff, put it in the cupboard, stick a padlock on it, boom, job done. That's your space. Uh, so you need to rent it out. That That's your bits where you lock it away when you're, you know, you keep your clothes, half a wardrobe, whatever you want to do with it. That's up to you. But um, that's the way I recommend doing it. Um, Spiritual Gift Ireland, I just posted a question. Oh, will I be taking the vaccine? Um, currently at the moment, no. <laughs> um, I've got to admit my trust in the British government personally is very little. Um, I look at the way they handled Brexit, I look at the way they've handled this whole COVID situation, it has not been great. Um, now, I analyse figures as part of my job on a daily basis. Uh, I mean, technically I would be an analyst. And even from day one, the figures didn't look right. And then they force you to do something, then um, apologize that they knew their figures were wrong, but they knew the figures were wrong. It's to force you to do something, then retract it. Because then it's like, you do this, and then, oh yeah, you were right, we were wrong. Because we've already forced you to do it by then. You've already done what we wanted. There's no, um, there is no ownership in the sense of nobody sacked for doing that. Nobody's gone, right, you lied to me, you're sacked. That doesn't happen. They just go, oh, I'm ever so sorry, as if they didn't know about it. But they do. That's the, that's the frustrating thing. Of course they do. Um, I don't know how they would function without knowing, in my personal opinion, because it's their job to know. Um, I'm next door to the Euro Park, I think. The Euro Park. Euro Park. Are you on about the parking or are you on about the... Um, I think which are well, you on about parking nations um yeah, you might mean parking nations i think uh which you're not far from the the, the poor area in Torrevieja. um so it's not a bad area but like i said i mean if you're going there if you've got your own car as well um there's plenty of places to see uh, and am I going to buy a house? Um, I'm going to buy an apartment with a roof deck. 
That's what I'm looking for. Um, the reason for that is I'm not too keen on having a house. This is my own thought. Um, because I like having... Because bear in mind, like now, I'm working in the UK. My wife has lots of friends and stuff in the area. I'd rather have an apartment where we have other people in the same block. Because you've always got that bit of support mechanism for each other. Where houses, I find, you may find next door is only here three months of the year. And the other, that way, they're not there for six months. And in Tonebeca, one of the things they do is they'll cable tie the gates and drive past, past a week later, see if anyone broke the cable tie. The reason for that is they want to know if it's empty so they can go in and rob it. Um, so the point is, I'd rather have an apartment. It's a, it's a little bit harder to do that sort of stuff. <coughs> but don't get me wrong, there is squatter issues in some of the properties that does occur in Tonebeca. They will change, break in, change your locks and move in. Uh, that's, that's a big problem in Spain, not just Torreca. Madrid gets it, Barcelona gets it, because the cost of properties has gone up. Um, people are moving at your house while you're on holiday. <laughs> that's, uh, that is the reality, but I would say it's probably more um, unlikely if the building's secure it, and having a front door in a you know, multi-occupancy -op building um, it's probably more likely that nobody will go in there or break in there um, simply because they're less likely to know somebody's away on holiday or whatever but also unless somebody informed them because obviously you've got to get in the front front door in the first place which is normally locked um, it's much harder to understand to know what's going on in there but a gate on the front of a house cable to it come back in a week mm, it's not broken another week mm, no still not broken okay time breaking it's a little bit too easy then uh, dark side there's a big park with a european lake and lots of wild birds yeah that's the that's parking nations um yeah that that's that's quite a nice little park that actually my, my kids like going there um they have a big um i think it's like it's like a dinosaur dragon. It looks like peach dragon type dinosaur at the bottom um, in the kids' park. Um, but yeah, that's quite nice in the summer to walk around. Um, you're not far from the supermarkets either there. Uh, and the co you're, you're within walking distance of the, of the front line, you know, for the restaurants and stuff as well. But there's lots of little restaurants and bars all the way around there, you know. I, I do think a lot of these places are understated because with tapas and stuff, you can get some really nice stuff in some of these little places um, that are more local than for tourists. But you go in there and the food's great. But they're not really promoting it very well. But they're not really fussed. You know, there's some of the best bars and restaurants we go to. They're little tiny places. There's a you know seat for about 12 or whatever. But you go in there and, you know, they have all different different stuff. I mean, there's a little one down near uh, Car Four. Um, the Car Four car park. As you come in for parking, you know the main car park. Straight ahead, I think it's called Bulvaria or somewhere. But they they do some nice little tapas in there. Um, but it's only a very small restaurant. Um, but that's what I like about Spain. The variety is there. Um, you know, don't get me don't get me wrong. There's the, there's not as many uh, high-class restaurants in there, but it, that's to do with the fact that Torrebeca is more of a working town. Um, but do I really want to be going five-star every day? The answer is no. We used to have this thing out in the oil field. It said, well, you could give people caviar and lobsters every day, but after a week, they're sick of it. Um, so the point is, it's sort of like, I'd much rather have that and going in and get different tapas. And, um, you know, you go up to Habaneras, you go up there, there's, I think it's Oldon, Oldon on the top does um, great Japanese dishes and ramen and, you know, all that sort of lovely stuff. So it's good variety there. That's what I like. Um, ah, and that's awesome. We have an apartment 700 meters up uh, at Alcura. Yeah, I know where you are. Yeah, that's, that's quite a nice little area as well. You're right on the front there. Uh, so that's that's quite nice. It's good, good to get there because you know a lot of these areas have got nice beach access without being too condensed. You know, because I, I I do like La Mata because the beach is a lot more quiet than other areas. You know, go north of us. Um, I would say Guadamar 
their beach is much more busy it's flatter but you know don't get me wrong so it's a, it's a uh, more flat beach easier to access etc parking is absolute nightmare um, but at the same time it's a good beach there and then to the south with Tororaja when you start getting in there and the beach can be absolutely jam packed same as you go um, a little bit further along from La Mata between that bit between uh, Tororaja and La Mata that can get really busy um, but you do find if you go down to where the jetty is and go left it's much quieter there um, and it's quite narrow quite shallow um for the first probably about 100 meters but you go a bit further up is you're up to here if you even without going out too far yeah telling me all the best spots to go swimming eh? <laughs> um are you going to buy a house uh yeah i sort of recovered that so i'm just going through the comments now um elaine smith i'm looking at buy a a holiday beach apartment along the Costa Blanca. Still not sure where exactly. Can you recommend anywhere? There's just me and my husband. It depends on what you're looking for, to be honest. Um, I like La Mata. That's my personal choice. But I know some, but also depends on your budget. Um, I mean, where I am, you can get a two to three bedroom place from anywhere from, say, 50,000 euros upwards. And I say upwards because there's some new developments a bit further down. They've knocked up some houses down and they've constructed some new builds. Now, I believe some of those new builds are between 300,000 and 700,000 euros. So the point is, you can go from this level to this level quite easily. Um, but I do recommend visiting the areas and double checking where they are on Google Maps. Because even La Mata, they will say it's in La Mata. And... Well, it's, La Mata, as an old town, is all on the coast. But the new bits can be right in the middle of a urban development. So they'll say, oh, it's La Mata. And it's, yeah, it's a house that's 10 years old, for example. But it's actually in the middle of a development. It's nowhere near the beach. You have to drive to the beach. Is that far. Um, so just double check on the Google Maps where it actually is. Um, but... Personally, I think Santa Polo looks quite good. Um, I've spent a bit of time up there. They've got a nice beach, a bit of uh, windsurfing up there. Um, you know, there's some sports facilities on there. Uh, a lot of people like Alicante. I find the restaurants are great there, but it's a little bit built up for what I like. Um, and Torrebeca is quite nice. But some people may not like Torrebeca because the street's quite narrow. So it all depends what you're looking for. Because parking can be a nightmare in Torrebeca, for example. Um, generally, like, for example, I take the kids to the dentist. My wife will go into the dentist and I'll be driving around. By the time the kids have already had their dentist appointment, I'm picking them up. And I haven't found a parking space yet. Um, that's quite common. Um, it is a difficult place to park because bear in mind it's not a case of people stopping and going and stopping people live above all the buildings and in the building sorry so the point being is the parking's always near full occupancy so it's, it's difficult for parking so those are the sort of things I would look at myself um, because you, I do recommend having transportation of some description um, the buses are great, don't get me wrong, you can get a bus straight from the airport into Tolibeca bus terminal and you're not far from anywhere there. Taxis, as you just come out, there's normally about five or six taxis waiting ready to take you, they're not expensive. Um, and so I think the bus is about seven euros from the airport to Tolibeca and I think it's about 50 to 60 euros if you get the taxi and about 40 to 40 to 60 with private hire. Um, so yeah, so just bear that in mind. You spend a bit of time on it. The best advice is rent. If you know an area, rent something in that area and then just go and have a look around. Yeah. Book a week, spend a bit of time there, see what's there, um, and get a feel for it. Um, so we're carrying on for that. Do you think the property prices will change due to COVID? I think the property prices are going to change due to Brexit. The COVID stuff, um, I know so many people are itching to travel right now. They've been, they're tired and fed up of being stuck at home. 
they're desperate to go on a holiday they're desperate to get back to their holiday apartments but i think the uh the fly in the ointment is going to be brexit i don't think um because imagine you've got your holiday home there and this year you've had no holiday last year you might have been thinking of selling it this year you're thinking i can't wait to go back there you really are you're like i can't wait to go back i miss it and i know a few people that sold their spanish homes then gone i miss my villa i miss my house i miss my because once it's gone it's gone so the point being is i don't think that's going to be the negative i think the negative is actually going to be the brexit because that's going to throw a real spanner in the works uh well, next question yeah, dark support, love my local tapas bars. Yeah, exactly. The tapas are great. I love it. Uh, what do you think about Toro Echo Central to have apartment? Um, for me, it, it's more a case of I don't have an issue with um, the location of Toro Echo at all. You know, for me, I, I find it's quite narrow street wise, but I find the area is fine. You know, people are friendly. Um, I find that there's a good selection of restaurants, commute, commuter access is good because you can get, you know, the bus station gets you pretty much anywhere. I mean, I've been to Madrid um, via the bus. I've been to, um, where else have I been on the bus there? There's been a few places I've used the bus for, but you can get up to Alicante. Alicante gives you train access as well. Get right across the, right across Spain with high, high speed access. So accessibility is really, really good. Um, but it all depends on what you want out of where you live. And I think the prices are cheap. I do think that um, the access accessibility is good. I think the facilities in the whole area is very good um, because you've got a lot of nature parks, you've got uh, wildlife parks, you've got small play parks, these little um, square areas, grass green, you know, where there's little kid play parks, all that sort of stuff. There's a few of those scattered around. Um, but then you've got Orihuela on your doorstep, which has got a load of facilities, La Mata, the beaches, um, Elche, Alicante. There is so much as an area, um, which is all cheap to move around in. Um, I think the bus from, I think the, can my wife got the bus from the Centro to Zina Zina Zinia Boulevard. That's a dry throat now. Um, I think it's one euro twenty five um, each way, which I don't. Think, I think that's dirt cheap. Definitely wouldn't be that cheap in the UK. Um, so the point is, you've got the bus. The buses are a fantastic resource in that area. Um, so yeah, I, d I do think there's a lot of positive stuff in there, um, and there's a lot of little hidden gems because a lot of people don't realise. Although there's a lot of narrow streets. On the other side, there might be a swimming pool on the second floor in, in these developments, because there are. There's a lot of swimming pools that people can't even see. Have a look on Google Maps. Um, next question. Yeah, 150,000 pounds. You've got a, you can get a villa for that. You can get two, two or three, uh, one, two bedroom apartments, rent some of them out. Um, I do think there's opportunities there. I do think more people are gonna, I, I don't think the market's going to change in a negative way in the sense of people to and fro. I think people are that fed up at the moment, they'll jump through the hoops to go on holiday. And I think once we get through to about March, all the bureaucracy and the fallout from Boris's Brexit will actually have come to a conclusion where things have had to move. No matter how slow he is, the economy relies on these things happening. So he'll be pushed to come to resolutions on this stuff um, because we're relying, we're relying on food from Europe and we're rely, they're relying on our hotel and um, hospitality incomes when we go to Spain, Portugal and other places. So these will get resolved quite fast. I can see it coming. Um, but I do think it's important um, to sort of just spend time, look around, see what see what you want out of where you want to be. Because I know um, I've had a few people over the years that want to do something because it's been in their head, but they've never been there. And I said, before you come here, go and spend two weeks there. Go and spend a week there. Go out there for a week first and don't just sit by the beach 
run around find everything that you think you would will keep you occupied and keep you interested because you need things that keep you keep you busy you know whether it's you like uh, i don't know restoring cars whether it's uh, joining a yacht club whether it's uh, golf football whatever it is you've got to find those communities that make it worth your while you know that you're going i've got some people here uh, in Spain, the Ladies of Spain is quite a big group uh, that have regular regular events, and people people enjoy going to them. Now, I would say it's probably more or um, women of a certain age, but it doesn't mean that it's no good for everybody because it is. Because you know, there's a whole support mechanism there. There's a good community, different people, different backgrounds. And even they've even started this um, Ladies of Spain group um, business page, so they can even promote pay businesses, but not in the Ladies of Spain. It's a separate page for that. So, so the point is, that's that's the the uh, the important aspects of this is is there is community there. There is there are real people, um, and that makes a big difference. Because I've seen people that go, oh, I'm unhappy, I hate it here. Do you speak Spanish? No. They, it's up to, they don't speak English. And it's like, a lot of them do actually speak English, but they won't speak English to you because you don't speak Spanish to them. Because um, sometimes that is the biggest issue. We make zero effort and then complain about it. Because um, my Spanish is not fantastic. I mean, I get people pick me up on my uh, Spanish not being great. But... The amount of work I do on my day job, I'm lucky to get sp spare time to even come to Spain, never mind um, keeping on top of my Spanish language learning. Um, doesn't mean I've given up, it's just literally I've got to keep fitting into the time, which is what makes it a lot harder to do. It's all around time skills. Um, happy to help where I can, Elaine. Um, if you need any any other help, feel free to message. Um, there's a few real estate agents I know as well. Um, now they'll they'll probably tell you um, take what I say with a pinch of salt because that's exactly what I say about them, but that's my point. The final decision is always going to be yours. But what I actually say is think about it, take your time. When somebody says, "Oh, we've got somebody made an offer this afternoon," and all this sort of stuff that real estate agents love to say, I just go, "Okay, well, obviously not for me then," and you'll still see it advertised three months later because um, there was nobody buying they were trying to get your deposit out of you um, so the point being is the best thing to do is don't let anybody sway your opinion whether it's me saying double check the area which to be to be fair is something I would highly recommend before making any commitment to a, a purchase of a property um, or a real estate agent telling you there's a buyer for this week um, but at the same time, just take your time. There is no rush. There's no race here. It's your money. You earned it. Take your time. Um, okay, next question. How do you think um, Brexit will change residency? We'd like to retire in Spain in 10 years. I think the Brexit's going to influence it, but I think it's going to be more a case of they spain's always been more concerned about your regular income than lump sum unless you're talking over half a million pounds so as long as you can demonstrate your regular income i don't think it's going to be as difficult as it's being portrayed sometimes i think it's just a case of extra forms you fill in form g2 instead of g7 the same as when you do residency i think there's forms 15 16 18 and there's, i think it's another one the, the now it's NIE. There's at least three different forms depending where you've come from and the reasons you're filling the forms in. Um, that's that's going to continue or just be a different form. And please don't forget there is people outside the EU that are already retiring in Spain. So just remember we're one of the biggest influences in Spain along the coast. We as Europeans um, are buyers of those properties that sit there. We're, we're a bigger influence on the coast. They do not want to disrupt that. They, if anything, Spain wants to work with us, not against us. Um, so I've got nothing negative to say on that at all. Um, next question. We have Gary's to her apartment to think that is good. Yes, 
having a garage on your apartment is always recommended. Um, a garage in La Mate will cost between six and twelve thousand euros to buy one. Uh, an underground garage. There, they are very important to have because, like I was saying, parking is an absolute nightmare. Um, so if you've got a private garage, well done. Because a lot of places try to sell them separately because the there is a demand for them, and like I said, it's six to twelve thousand. You think, well, doesn't sound that lot that much, but you can get a studio apartment for about forty thousand. So a quarter quarter of a cost of an apartment because the square meterage ain't going to be far off it. Let's be honest. Um, you're nearly in the cost of an apartment. So yeah, it's definitely worth having one. Uh, tin tin tin. Hey Matt, have an apartment next to Tori de Mauro. Ah, so you're next to the the windmill. Is it sorry? No. The tower or yeah, you're the at the top, aren't you? Sorry, I was thinking the the reason the windmill hit my head there is simply because the the blades were missing last time I seen it. And that's why I was just it just crossed my mind when you mentioned that. because uh, obviously Tori's tower. Um but the yeah. Has anybody fixed the windmill? That's a question. <laughs> but your location is really good. I like it up there, especially when they've got the little restaurants open uh, in the, the park. That's, that's a really nice spot at night where they've got the little lights on. It's, it's, I like it there. It's, it's a good place. A good, good place for an apartment, right, right at the top of the hill, unless you're walking. <laughs> uh, Inaka21, will they require vaccine passport travel to Spain in the future? Um, I'll tell you what, there was an interesting article I was just reading um, because the one about in Birmingham having a test and dine situation where you get tested so you can go and eat in a restaurant. Um, I think they're going to try and manipulate people to do what they want. Um, so will they need a passport in the future? I think let's see where we are in March because by that time, there'll be that many people with vaccines and stuff in the system. Um, we'll actually know exactly what the government are up to. Um, because I know they're, they're heavily rolling this thing out now. Um, so we'll know if anybody's got any third ears or uh, grown an extra arm or something um, by March. Um, so yeah, well, myself, I'll wait. Um, if it becomes compulsory, which is a bit of a peculiar one. I mean, I can understand Spain doing it in the sense of its its own nation demanding everyone who enters the country having it, but I can't see how they can enforce people in a country to do it. But don't get me wrong, I'm sure they're going to be trying that very, very soon. I'll leave that one for another day. Uh... <laughs> Elaine Smith, I'm a woman of a certain age. You'll get on great um, with the ladies of Spain. Join them on Facebook. Um, they're, they're quite a large group. I think, can't remember, it's, it's thousands. I mean, there's literally thousands. There's more than one group throughout Spain. So there's there's different groups. Um, and I know lots of women of a certain age, which is why I'm careful with my words. Um, but the, the point being is there's lots of stuff going on. Um, I mean, if you look at uh, some of the people I know that do the dance dance classes um colin for example was on channel five um that's how i ended up knowing about colin um he does the modern jazz i think it is i may be wrong because no it can't be jive not jazz modern jive and so does mary mary does jive uh, modern jive as well so they have dance classes every week um obviously they've been hit quite hard this year um so there's a there's a couple of people in different areas doing similar things i don't even know i think I'm not sure if they've actually met um because i did put them in touch with each other because they they run similar type classes so i thought i'll put you in touch with each other but i don't don't know if they actually already knew each other it's just the fact i just randomly messaged colin one day after seeing him on channel five and says oh good on you for for doing your business um because i know the thing with the internet you get a lot of negative sticks so i thought well Good on him for getting on Channel 5 um, and get putting himself out there. So, uh, so I just messaged him with a bit of support. We've been chatting ever since. Uh, next question, Annette. 
I hope you buy a good apartment in you know, Cali de Gases in Torrevieja Centro. Would be nice. Um, I'll be perfectly honest. I'm probably going to be buying in the same street. I mean, um, I like it where we are. My wife has so many friends and stuff in the street. Um, we're probably just going to stay in Avenida de Med Mediterraneo um, because it, we have a have a community there. That we, you know, we know so many people. Um, when you're on first name terms with the baker, <laughs> the greengrocers, the butchers. Um, it, it's your it's your own little village almost you know in the sense of you're part of that community so i think the first i'm going to move is probably about 80 feet <laughs> across the road um so, which is why i'm not in a rush I, I want to buy buy the right apartment and just move literally over the street um so i won't even need a removal van i'll probably just keep the place I've got rented and just move stuff over a few weeks. Cause like I said, I want to renovate it inside. I want to take the walls back, put insulated panels up, um, put um, underfloor heating in. So then you don't have to worry about the heating system, put solar heat on the, on the top. All in my head at the minute, all these ideas. Um, Cause I may have to, oh, I was just going to say, I have to bring this stuff over from the UK. Bit late for that now with the Brexit. But we'll we'll cross that bridge when we get to it. Um, yeah, leave that for another day. Has Spain started vaccinating people against uh, COVID yet? Um, I have no idea. I don't think they have. I think the UK was the first first in the world, as far as I'm aware. I know Russia's got a, another vaccine that they they're testing at the moment. That's what I found, I found that a little bit odd in the BBC because they were very negative on the Russian test but pro UK and I'm sitting there going well surely both of them have had the same level of testing in the sense of they're both new products and they both seem to have skipped a number of processes that normally seem to be associated with vaccines uh, in my personal opinion um, so why is one bad and one good when I think both of them have still got to be proven uh, in my in my personal eyes because I, I do think we've um, shot ahead of normal testing um, in the sense of confirming that we ain't going to get a third year or something um, in a mocking type way but it, it does make me a bit concerned. Um, uh, salsa no is uh it's i'm sure it's modern a uh, modern jive or something uh, i'm sure it is 100 <laughs> percent sure uh, uh cheese head my friend richard h wants to move to spain but identifies as part of the lgbtq plus community will he have any trouble making friends there he loves dancing uh, to be to be perfectly honest, um, in La Mata, there's a place called the Boys Club, um, which is obviously um, of a particular part of the community. Um, but also, I know several couples in Spain already that are um, happily. I don't. I don't you know how to define the relationship because I just know them as friends. You see, because I don't have any issue with identifying anybody as anybody. They're just people are just people to me, but. There is several couples I know which are have no issues whatsoever in Spain because Spain is very vive la vive, you know, live and let live. I, from my experiences, everyone's just chilled out. Now, don't get me wrong, if you're in Madrid, maybe a little bit different. Um, but along the coast, I find people are just chilled out and just going about their daily lives. I mean, I've, I've seen uh, a, a guy wearing compl complete pink, tight pink shorts pink um sequined hat and a pink shopping trolley at the market nobody back with an eyelid i mean if that doesn't define it i don't know what does it's like literally nobody really cares you know people uh it, it's it's just one of those um it's just one of those things where you're just like oh okay you know <laughs> nobody's bothered um it's difficult to trust the Russians, but the problem I've got is a lot of the stuff we get told is often proven as the opposite 
from uh, the political arenas and the the newspapers, etc. Um, so it is a case of which one's better of the two. I think they're not that far apart in that sense. It's not whether we should trust one and the not the other. It's just the fact should we trust neither of them. I mean, that's what that's, that's more my point. <laughs> Because it's all going, oh, well, they're bad, we're great. And it's like, well, hang on a minute. Um, your statistics seem to have been proven wrong over and over and over again around COVID. And then you retract things later and you go, oh, yeah, we put those figures in by mistake. Yeah, constantly people have said they were wrong. You know, that didn't add up, that didn't add up. And I, even myself, I said that didn't add up. Um, so, yeah, I don't know. Um my personal view is I do think there was a lot of stuff where they just ignored the questions and pushed, pushed past it. Yeah. Um, Robin Banks, is there a, a good gay scene? No, no idea. It, <laughs> like I said, it's not my, not my community. I'll leave people to do what they want. Um, but there is, I'm sure if you searched around on the internet, you better get that type of information, but it's not a community I'm part of. Um, yeah, um, so can't really comment on that one. Hi, Stephen. How's it going? Uh, been working today. Um, I've got to admit, I've got some work on for the for tomorrow um, to leave next week. Clear. Um, yeah, I've got to admit. Now I'm getting to that point where I'm just like on the exit strategy to get out the get out of the UK and back home. Um, one of the keen things I've got at the moment is to just make sure by Tuesday everything's finished so that anything I can focus on getting on the exit. Um, I'll put up another video because I think there's been a few questions around the the testing scenario. Um, so so with that, I need to do some research and see if it's anything up at Birmingham Airport because I know a few people over there um, if you can get the test there that would make so much more sense I mean if it's a 40 minute test it makes perfect sense because you just arrived to the air at the airport um, three hours early like you would on an international get your test get your results because let's be honest they'd be turned up to the airport if you're, you're getting a test for the following day or whatever from, I don't know, like me, I'm having to go to Leicester for it. Um, it'd be more convenient to get at the airport because either way, I wouldn't be able to fly if it came back positive. So it doesn't matter if I'm stood at the airport or I got it the following day after driving to Leicester and back. You know, if it went, oh, it's positive, you can't fly. Job done. You've still lost to fly the ticket either way because you ain't going to refund it that and get a um, change on it that late in the day. I'm sure you can't. Um, so, um, yeah, um, so any other questions is the big, big question. Um, I do think myself the the housing market's going to recover, um, over the next 12 months. But it's not going to be a case of a massive jump or a massive drop. I think what we're going to actually see is a slight reduction in price between uh, probably now, because there's normally a 4% reduction in the Christmas periods anyway, uh, and the summer. And I do think whatever happens with Brexit between now and the summer will influence the house prices. But normally you'll get a little bit of a bit in the middle, the holiday periods, where they'll try and bump the prices of the houses up. Um, so if you are buying a house, always rem remember the winter's always gonna be about 4% cheaper. The market in Spain has been sort of stuck um, on a constant. It really has. He, I was talking to Igor about this because he was just saying the prices this year have literally not moved at all. But, you know, there is no up, no down. It's just been stuck on pause. But part of that, uh, Jack, uh, good to catch you. Good to catch you as well. Big hi. Um, but the, the market itself has been stagnant completely this year. So it's not retracting. It's not going up. This is where people have just um, battened down the hatches for the year. Because obviously work's been reduced. Um, 
a lot of the heavy hits already happened in the last recession. Those that couldn't afford house, their houses lost them. Those that have got negative equity still can't sell them because they're worth less than the bank will let them sell them for. Um, so those properties are still stuck in the cycle. So those are, are constant. The holiday homes, I don't think, are selling as fast as people would like. The market's down. Um, I was reading from a real estate agent yesterday who was talking about the number of ugly homes on the market. What he's on about is the older builds. So it's because people have got bigger demand. They want this, they want that. Well, the, the problem you get with an ugly home, as he puts them, these are like the concrete over steel. They could be renovated quite cheap and you can buy them quite cheap. So the one I'm looking at is probably going to cost me, I don't know, 80 to 90,000. Three bedroom, needs a full renovation. Still looks like 1978 in there. Um, point being is, rip the floor up, underfloor heating, put a screed on it. And I probably ain't going to tile it actually. I'll probably uh, put um, more of a wood or a laminate finish on the top simply because it's um it's just a bit warmer um but the walls insulate the walls so you put the thermal thermal on there so you've got insulation so you've got in the warmer months it keeps the cold air in in the winter months it keeps the hot uh, hot air in um those types of renovations well the new builds are supposed to have a lot of this stuff and i often find don't um so i sit there and go right i can buy that for 80 grand I can fully renovate it any way I want. I can put all the Cat 6 in. I can um, do what I want to the whole place and build it exactly the way I want it. And it'll probably cost me twenty, thirty thousand 30000 pounds on renovations. And I've got a three-bedroom place right on the beach. Take that to a new build. New build's going to cost me, from a studio, probably... Somewhere around ninety to one hundred and twenty thousand upwards. Um, it may be a bit smaller than the, the the property I've already got, and at the same time, yes, it's all finished. Yes, you can move straight into it, um, but it's going to be myself. I prefer renovating, but bearing in mind, I've been working in construction most of my life, so ripping the floor out, ripping the walls out, changing the windows, and that that's. That's just daily life. Um, I've spent a couple of million on renovation projects this year in work, just to give you an idea. Um, uh, let's scroll back. Uh, next question, Julie. Will, will the Brexit affect your work in the UK? Um, technically, no, because there was bilateral agreements around the taxations before the EU set up. So you can't be, the double taxation would be the only issue. Um, the rest of it is business as usual. And don't get me wrong, I'll probably end up running through passports. I'm going to get them stamped here, stamped there, stamped there. Stamped. But at that point, they may actually do an express uh, where basically there may be an ability to actually just travel without having to do it constantly um, simply because you're having that many trips backwards and forwards that they may actually not want to stamp your passport um, because of the the volume of passports um, so yeah I do think it'll slow things down I think it'll slow it down for the next four or five months but bear in mind filling in the current forms for your healthcare form getting that scanned at both airports coming and going um, that's probably about as much as the inconvenience is going to be very similar they're going to want to scan your passport, double check it, check who you are, do all that bit. So I don't think it's going to change much beyond that. Um, that that That's my view on that. I think that's going to be the reality. I think it's going to be as simple uh, as irritating as doing the, the healthcare stuff at the minute. It's just going to take that over. Um, Lanark 21, are you in Leicester? No, I'm having to go to Leicester to do my... Uh, <laughs> that's where I could get my nearest... Um, and what do you call it? COVID test. Because uh, I had to get it, pri um, what do you call it, um, private. Because I couldn't get one from Boots. I couldn't find, there was nowhere near. So I ended up getting it from Leicester. So that's why I'm going to Leicester. Um, a little bit further south. I'm actually sat in Northampton at the minute. Uh, next question. 
yeah, I, I would have thought there would be some people now out of work wanting to sell their overseas properties to free up money. A lot of people are stuck with them, though. The market's crashed. The, you know, there's, the market is completely stagnant. The, the housing prices haven't even moved. They, they're literally just frozen. Um, so I would say probably on the higher end, there may be some sales, but there may more likely to be repossessions. Now, the repossessions, they go back to the bank, and then the bank sort of dictate the sales price. So a lot of the prices haven't moved. That's, that's what I'm saying. The market should have gone like that, at least a little bit, should have sort of dropped by, I don't know, 15 20%. But realistically, I think they dropped to about 14%, but then it just stayed there. Because um, that 14% wasn't the real 14% anyway, because a lot of the prices get inflated in the summer anyway. So the point being is, I don't think it had actually moved. And Eagle deals with properties a lot more than I do. And he says there's been no change on house prices at all this year. Because bear in mind, the real estate agent will stick 6,000 euros on like that, just on the top and just go, yeah, that house that was 86 is now 92 because they're taking 6,000 commission. Uh, so that's instant. So six grand straight on there. And every agent I know will say, no, nah, that's not true. Yeah, I know it is. I know a lot of them do that. So the point being is, so I say we never take it from the buyer. You wouldn't know. Unless you've seen the owner directly and they were selling it six grand more uh, less. Um, currently, like the property that I was originally looking at, well, funny enough, it's on the market for £6,000 more, uh, €6,000 more than the owner wanted to sell it to me for. Now, don't get me wrong. I'm not going to deal with a real estate agent. I'll just say... I'm buying direct from you. I don't care what agreement you have with a real estate agent. My money's there. I said, because once the deal's closed, it's closed. I knew this deal before you spoke to the real estate agent. We were already discussing it. Don't want to pay them money. Don't need them. Um, so I do think there is some uh, opportunities out there. Don't get me wrong. But I think some people are just hanging on and hoping the price will go up a little bit. But I think it is looking at it. You will get a nosedive once the... Um, the Brexit kicks in because it's just going to create a, a massive pause because it'll be all that bureaucracy and the values will drop then because not because it's really dropped it's just the interest is dropped because people don't want to commit to anything um, and then there'll be a, a little peak come up afterwards because all that money that was going to be spent suddenly gets spent a year later or whatever um, but at the same time the other side of that being is a lot of these ugly properties um there's lots of them and those prices i don't think they'll drop much because they're already near the bottom of the market value um there's a lot of renovation costs on them but newer properties they're owned by the banks they're owned by the privately fine privately financed either by banks or private investors um they only need probably your deposit to recover most of the costs so for them they can sit on them and they can leave them sat there as, for as long as they need to. It's where people have gone bankrupt, pretty much, is where the opportunities will be. Uh, Stephen. Uh, I'm good, thanks, mate. Hang on. Uh, for the first time in a long time, I'm actually having a lazy day. I think it's well earned. I'm recharging. Loving the live, by the way. You look well, mate. Yeah, I t I've got to be honest. I... Um, I do feel I need to do more walking. Uh, I'm going to go out for a walk after the chat, to be fair. Um, the the whole COVID situation has really put everything on hold for me. It's irritating. Um, like I said, I, I try not to be so negative on it because I know some people have had a really hard time. I, I can't really grumble. I still have my pay every month. Um, I've managed to get home a couple of times this year. And at the same time from a negative point of view I haven't been able to see my kids on a constant basis or my wife so there is some things that um, are a bit more compounded than many other people have um, you know because I know some people are stuck at home with the wife and kids well try not seeing them for months it's a little bit a little bit different um, I know some people are going to go yeah that sounds like sounds like heaven no, <laughs> no I'm quite happy to spend time with my wife and kids um yeah, uh, so yeah. Oh, hang on. I have to cancel that. Um, 
Yeah, uh, so yeah, I can understand some people are a bit more... Oh, um, I'd love to not have the time. But when you live in a space and stuck here, because we're home working as well, um, I do end up going out to schools and stuff, because I look after school buildings. Um, a lot of the time I'm walking around on roofs and things, um, simply because I try not to enter the schools, because I'd say that's probably one of the... If you were worried about COVID, it's probably one of the worst environments to be in, where you've got hundreds and hundreds of children that don't really bother with social distance or understand it sometimes, because um, they're all, you know, young kids grab people's legs and all sorts. So, you, you know, it's, I just avoid kids like the plague in the, at work. Um, but yeah, so yeah, it can be quite hard, but let's see, we're nearly at the end of the year. Let's hope for next year being a lot better. Let's hope Boris sorts the hope, hopefully sorts out the uh, Brexit before the end of December. Uh, <laughs> that's a, that's amazing. Good name. I love dinosaurs. What about damn? Apparently, this is a problem with old houses. That's why you go for old apartments. Um, houses, the, the a lot of time there's no DPM, damp-proof membranes. So in the winters they do suffer with damp, and what you'll get is like a powdery mold that goes up the inside of the walls. That's expensive to fix. Um, you've got to cut it all back, um, and that can be painful. Um, a lot of time not too fussed in Spain because guess what these are summer houses a lot of the time so why do they care about the winter nobody lives in it um, so this is where I try and go go above the foot ground floor or get a newer build um, you're not likely to get as much damp issues now I say as much because one of the problems you also get is making sure everyone's paid their community fees because if they don't pay the community fees, there's nobody paying the money to fix the roof. If nobody's fixing the roof on a black of a flats, get a roof leak, goes down the cavity, runs down the cavity, and it's in the, the wall throughout the building is getting kept damp in rainy season. And it could fill up with water, could get other issues in there. Um, but the point being is you need to recognize that that is a problem. So it is worth looking at the community fees when looking at buying a property. Um, not just on old houses, on new as well. So if you're going into a development, the community fees cover things like the garden maintenance, the paths inside the, the community, the swimming pool, the tennis courts, all that stuff is within the community fees. If nobody's paying for it, there may be no maintenance going on because there's no budget for it. Um, but if it's getting paid, then you're less likely to get a problem with the, the dam coming down the inside of your wall from the roof, because you may be down three stories and it's coming from the top. Um, if nobody's paying for the maintenance fees, nobody's fixing it. And you may be better off just getting it fixed yourself on the roof and then arguing, trying to get it paid through the community fees. Because um, you'll still have to argue with the, the president and the committee that you'll pay for it as long as you get the money back or because uh, you've got to let them know you're doing it because you can put a satellite dish up or something like that it's got to go through the community um, for decision making um, even on a small block of like say eight apartments they'll have their own committee of some description a, um, yeah there's a, there's a whole ream of little bits of discussion to go on around there's a few politics and stuff that do go on uh, Jack O'Neill, do you still have nighttime curfews? Um, to be fair, I don't think when I was there, the, the curfews were there. Um, no, they weren't, because we went out. We went out after 10 o'clock. So, no, I don't think it was an issue. But to be fair, where we are on the coast, the average age is 68. Um, it's mainly the Spaniards that go out after 10 o'clock, because that's dinner time. So I don't, because it's not like people going out binge drinking and stuff. We don't have any of that. It, it, there isn't enough people in that area of a drinking session mentality to actually have a drinking session. There's just not enough people um, inclined to do that. Um, I've hardly seen anybody drunk at any time in six years. 
Um, so I wouldn't say there's any of those types of problems. So maybe in some other areas, but I've never experienced it in Lamato itself. Uh, the recession hasn't kicked in properly yet, maybe by mid 2021. That's what I'm saying. We've got to see where the Brexit goes. Brexit is going to be the one where it's either going to dip it or, or it's going to rise. Um, cause I see the GDP has had a slight recovery. Uh, for the UK economy. Um, not that I think GDP has a lot of common sense in it. it you know, when you look at what the metrics are, I don't think it's that helpful. But as a benchmark, we have got limited information. Um, so we've just got to wait and see because at the moment, everything's just in limbo. Um, the expectations, nothing's going to happen. And, you know, nobody goes down the middle with this stuff. What you get is the pros and negatives. You know, you're either pro-EU or anti-EU. That's it. There's nobody in the middle. You know, they, they, you're not allowed to be in the middle and just say, well, I see you both got points here, but can we sit and talk about it? No, it's your pro or against. That's it. Forget everything else. And that's where this is sort of gone with the Brexit, about the fishery. And about these, you're like, okay, what about just sitting down and actually working out where we're heading with this well you know it's like well we're going to trade with america we're going to do it. those agreements aren't even in place so it's just a little bit bizarre because it's exactly the same issue they're both shooting off without actually conclusive um decision making it's just i will i will or this will happen or should happen but a lot of it isn't even guaranteed or even Agreed, never mind guaranteed. Uh, so, yes, the prices may change. Being cash buyers, yes, you, you've got a bigger opportunity there because you can skip a lot of the time that gets wasted with banks and stuff. Um, I could probably see what Igor knows. Um, if you drop me an email, I'll see what Igor is aware of in the area. Give me an idea of what you're looking for, um, and I'll see what he knows in the area because he speaks to a lot of um, homeowners. Um, so he does get a first first hand view of properties coming up because I mean it's a bit I'll give you an example as a I, I won't say where it is because we're friends with them a Swiss couple um, but we could buy their apartment for sixty four thousand yet it'll be advertised on the market seventy nine thousand um, why because we know them um, but. It, but the eagle knows a lot of people like that where you can actually get the the better price because they if they can get away with not dealing with real estate agents they're in for it because let's let's be honest the risk is not on them it's on you so you need to do your due diligence they just want their cash and out the door so that's that's the reality on the house purchase as a seller um their risk is minimal this, the issues on the buyer, you know, the emphasis is on the buyer to make sure there's no debts on it, make sure there's not multiple owners, making sure the tax is up to date, the old summers, making sure the community fees are up to date, making sure that you're dealing with the owners and not somebody else. Um, so, but for the seller, they don't have those risks. Um, so that's one of the reasons where real estate agents should be on top of the game because they have to, I think there's a regulation that states that it needs to be verified that the property they're selling, they're engaged with the owners of the property and not third party um, by law. So that's one of the things that real estate agents, somebody will be able to confirm that. But um, I'm sure they have to confirm by law that they're actually dealing with somebody who actually owns the property because of obviously scams that have happened over the years. Uh, Next question. Are there commercial real estate companies buying up foreclosures and accounting like over here in the US? It's a bloodbath over here. Yes, they do. And uh, that's been ongoing since the last recession, though. Um, they buy up entire estates that basically folded the real estate. Um, for example, uh, a bank, I'm not saying what bank, um, sold 114 houses to a private developer uh, that were all half finished. You know, the wind net. first fix is done. Um, it was halfway through second fix. The builder's gone back and took all the windows out, for example, so they were nearly finished. Um, they bought them all for virtually nothing. Um, yes, they do that. That still goes on. Um, if you've got the cash, you know, it's prime for it.
Uh, da, da, da. Yeah, sunlight robbery, that's 6,000 plus, so that's before we start. Uh, yeah, I'm not getting into the conversation that I've had with a real estate agent who knows it, the industry better than I do, but I know 6,000 is nothing. With some of the bigger stuff, it could be 20, 30 grand. Um, <laughs> I'm not, I mean, I'm, I'll just give you an example. You, you, I tell you I want to sell it for 220,000. So I find a buyer that goes, yeah, I'll, I'll have it at 220,000. So they go, great. And they go back to the seller and go, well, they'll buy it, but they only pay 200,000. And you go, okay, I'd put a bit of extra in there anyway. Well, guess who gets the 20,000 extra? <laughs> But that stuff does go on. Um, I know some people say, that's not me. That's We well, don't do that. And I'm like, I didn't say you did. I'm just saying you'll know as well as I do that does go on. Um, Richard, can I have your phone number so I can go on a date, please? Uh, I'm happily married. <laughs> Thanks for the offer. Uh, Next question. Do you know the the Costa Tropical area? No, it's not something I've seen. Um, I've spent time in the tropics. I was out in the Philippines for for a fair few old years. Um, so I've been out proper tropics, um, but I don't know the ones on the Costa. Big shout out to yourself, Matt. Thanks for all you're doing, all the time you put into the helping others. Glad to you. You're due home soon. See your wife and kids. Keep up the good work, buddy. Cheers for that, Stephen. Um, hopefully see you in Lamata at some point. You're going to have to get over this year. Well, next year, let's be honest. It's a bit late in the year to be this year. Um, but I ex expect to see you before March. See if we can get out there. Uh, Mike Drake, the problem for pet owners like myself, we're waiting to see what the situation is regarding pet passports after January. We're looking to rent before we buy, but the price is still greedily high. Yes, it, it's it's a peculiar one because I find I find the see the, the Spanish system is very similar to the way it is in the Philippines. And obviously, the Philippines is named after the old uh, king of Spain, um, so there's a very very strong connection there. Where if they know you're interested, they don't reduce the price. They just go, that's what it is. And they'll leave it at that. Because um, it's it's a really, I mean, I'll give you an example on the purchase I made out in the Philippines. We bought a um, building next to where we are. There's, I think, one, two, three, it's about four apartments in there. Um, so, so the point is, um, I asked the owner if he wanted to sell it and offered him 1.2 million. And he said, no, he wants 2 million for it. This is pesos. Um, and I'm like, okay. Fine. No, I'm not interested. He come back two months later and took the first offer. Now I could have reduced it to eight hundred thousand at that point because he was now desperate to sell. But because I asked him the first time, his instant reaction is to nearly double the price because it's like, well, if you're interested, no, well, you pay double what double that. And my response was, no thanks. I'll just leave it then because um, I, I wasn't in a rush to purchase. But I do find that's one of the problems is sometimes it's just like, well, that's what the price is. We're not negotiating it. That's what it is. And people will tell you, because I know uh, some real estate agents prefer to deal with Norwegians and people of Northern Europe rather than Brits, because Brits want to haggle. And they're just like, I can't be bothered, because like I say, a lot of Brits look for the ugly homes. Um, they'd rather go and sell a Norwegian, a 300,000 euro apartment than be haggling over a property that's 80,000 that you know is only worth 70. Um, but they don't see that, well, we've sold, so it's not worth my time. And it's like, but you could close the same deal in the same time because you know there is flexibility in there. But they're thinking, well, I'll get bigger commission because the 300000 is not your average sale. This is with a developer. The developer gives them some extra commissions and stuff. So all that goes on. So there's a lot of stuff that isn't so obvious when you're out there, unless you sit and go, they don't seem that interested in British clients and whatever. And a lot of it's because Brits haggle. 
where they find it much easier to sell to Norwegians, whatever, but also on more expensive properties. Um, but like I said, on new developments, there's extra commissions and stuff. I know you can get like 12 and 13% commission um, on a sale if you do it for a developer. And obviously some of these be sidelines. You'll have a real estate agent working in one real estate agent working for this other company because a lot of it's all on the internet these days. So, um, yeah, it's, a, it's, it's an interesting setup. But it does seem a bit unregulated uh, compared to some of the other stuff out there. But to be fair, that's life. Um, as long as you're aware of it, you can deal with it. Yeah, so I'll definitely see you there, Stephen. All right, I'm going to have to go soon, guys, because quite simply, I've got dry throat now. Just going to flick up and see if there's any other questions. Uh, da, da, da. So any last questions, is the time to do it? Okay, well that's so I'll call it a break, mate. That's um, thanks for thanks for your time. Thanks for watching. Really appreciate um, you guys being here like, for for your weekend, and hope to see you all in La Mata at some point. Take care.